So here's the problem. Years ago, life insurance professionals would receive in-depth sales training, not only showing different life insurance products and how they work, but the advanced planning concepts that bring in the five, six, and seven figure commission checks. Fast forward to today, and those types of training programs are almost non-existent. To solve the problem of inefficient marketing efforts and advisors stumbling around trying to understand how to do business in the advanced markets, Trained Advisor leads the way in showing top-level producers how to acquire, identify, present, and close advanced life insurance cases. Welcome to the weekly 10-minute concept training with Trained Advisor. I'd like to thank you for joining me for this session. What I want to talk to you in this session is about charitable remainder trust. Charitable remainder trusts are a very unique planning tool because it really, if it's done right, is you know a, really a win-win planning strategy for for our clients, for our charities, and you know for our clients' heirs. If you look at what the problem is, if I'm over here and I have a piece of appreciated property. And I don't care, I mean, if you wanna look at that, that could be real estate, that can be investments, that could be a business. Whatever that is, whatever that fair market value is for that asset, what's the problem? Well, if I sell, I'm gonna take my fair market value minus my basis, and I've got a gain. And that can be capital gains, that can be ordinary income, it could be a return of basis. Whatever that is, probably the biggest issue is the bigger the gain, the less the client wants to come in and sell that asset. So what do we do? Well, if our goal for our client is reduce taxes, well, that's our starting point. Because if we're reducing taxes, how are we going to do that efficiently? Well, with a charitable remainder trust, we can come in and we have our client or the donor in this case, they can come in and set up a charitable remainder trust. They get to decide the terms of the trust, who the trustee is, how long the trust is going to last, what are the payment terms out of the trust, one of the things they will name is ultimately a charity. Now, a lot of times a client up front will say they're not charitably inclined. And I've worked with a lot of clients that have really no charitable inclination whatsoever. But when they see what the tax deductions were, all of a sudden this makes sense for them. Those that are charitably inclined, it will make sense for them because they want to benefit their favorite charities. But when we set this up, what they're going to determine is, number one, what's the annuity payment going to be back to our client? Number two, they're going to determine how long this lasts, whether it's for a set number of years, or lifetime, joint lifetime, whatever that is, they're going to decide this annuity is going to be a set percentage payment. So what happens now, let's take that appreciated property, step one, transfer it in. And this is key, before our client signs any sales agreement, they need to make sure this asset is transferred into the charitable remainder trust. If, and I've had this happen, Clients have called me up after the fact and said, can we still do that charitable remainder trust? The answer is no. There's other planning we can do, but this one's off the table. Now, once we have that asset owned by the charitable remainder trust, now this charitable remainder trust, they can sell the asset tax-free. It's a charitable entity. So now they can come and say, asset, now becomes an investment or a managed account. Whatever, whatever they want as trustee, they can manage that account. Once we do that, once we've transferred it in, we know what our annuity payment is back to our client, we know how long this is, 
that's going to generate a charitable deduction. So now our client can go back on their tax return and they've got six, think six tax returns to use up that charitable deduction. There's limitations on how much charitable deduction we can write off on our, on our individual tax returns. That's going to be a limitation based off of adjusted gross income. If it's appreciated property that comes in here, 30% is the maximum adjusted gross income that we can write off with a charitable deduction. If it's cash, we can go up to 60%. But here's the thing. We've got six tax returns, so if we can't use it this year, we roll it to the next year, the next year, the next year. What I find is for most clients, we're going to use it up in probably one to three years because it's usually a high tax year when we set up the charitable remainder trust. But we want to make sure we get that planning. Now, part three. We're going to set up an annuity payment back. Now, this annuity payment we're going to set a percentage. So for easy math, let's say it's 5%, and it could be 5 to 10%, whatever. The only thing that we have to remember, the, the tax code says this calculated remainder back to charity has to be at least 10% calculated. Now, if I come in here, I can do this one of two ways. If I set up a charitable remainder annuity trust, the, the payment, let's just use the word, is set it's going to be 5% of whatever that asset was that I put into the charitable trust. So if it's worth a million dollars, that annuity payment each year is going to be 50000 for whatever that term of years or lifetime is. If I set up what's called a charitable remainder unit trust, now my 5% is the January 1 value each year times my 5% or whatever it is. Now, why would I do that? Well, if I'm managing this investment or having it managed, and I think I can grow that investment over time, then this is going to be 5% of an increasing number. If I want to just set it and forget it, I want it 5% of what I invested here, what I transferred in. The other thing that you can do in a charitable remainder unit trust, let's say Let's say we have a client that's 50 years old. They transfer this in. They really don't want this money until retirement. So what we can do is we can defer the payments. And when we defer it, think about those payments are being banked. So if the trust you know, was supposed to pay me 50000 this year and I don't take it, 50000 gets banked. Now here's how I turn this on and off. This trust will only pay out the income to a charitable remainder unit trust if there's income triggered in the trust. So let's say this is real estate I put in, and it's just bare ground, not even generating uh, rental income. But I think over the next 10 years, this property could double, triple, or even more. And I don't need the income for at least 10 years. Well, I'll let that real estate grow, 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 now in you know year 10, I sell it tax-free and reinvest it in income-producing assets. Now, as I produce income in here, starting in year 11, it owes me my 5% payment this year, plus any additional income I start taking from the banked account. So now, instead of a $50,000 a year annuity payment each year, maybe in starting year 10, if I've doubled my money, well, it's supposed to pay me out a hundred thousand, five percent of now two million, plus can I take out some of that bank money? So if we can defer it over time, we're going to take out a lot more money. Now the final part here is at the end of the term, whether that's a term of years, lifetime, whatever, whatever's remaining, whatever is left, whatever that remaining amount is, goes to charity. And, you know, now the charity gets a big benefit. Our clients taken a lot of income. They got a tax deduction in the process. 
so it really becomes a win-win for our, both the charity and for our client. Now, let's take a step back. Who is lost in this right now? Well, our donor probably has heirs, and if they see this asset going into the charitable remainder trust and off to charity at the end, the kids may not be too happy. So what we can do is come over here for the donor and let's get a life insurance policy. And for ease, let's say this was worth a million dollars, the asset. Now I come in and get, let's just see it easy, a million dollar death benefit policy and I wrap that into an islet. So I put it in trust. So now when my donor passes away, asset goes to charity. Whatever's left in here goes to charity. The kids will now get a million dollars income and estate tax free. So it can be a win for the kids as well because now they don't have to worry about probate. They don't have to worry about selling an asset. They don't have to worry about income tax or estate tax at death. They get cash. So can be a win-win strategy for the donor donors kids and the charity we just want to make sure it fits and the starting point is number one is this an asset that they want to sell is it an appreciated asset do they need additional income do they want to benefit charity and do they want to reduce their taxes if all that fits in this is a great strategy and there's some other moving parts and we'll get into more detail later but you get the concept and how it can work and I appreciate